There's no time. No. The time is... 13. O'clock. Hey, everybody. It's us again. Yep. You guys still aren't sick of, like, watching us? Holy crap. Yeah. Well, it's a show. It's a show, you know. And you never know what's going to happen. I do the same thing. I listen to the same people all the time on YouTube. I do, too. I mean, you know. Uh, get so used to it. I can't. But, well, yeah. the thing is, I like so many different shows that yeah. I seriously have. I think I have 35 videos in my watch later, and I keep adding new stuff. And every day I'm kind of like, oh, I should watch that, but it's an hour long and I don't have time to watch it. And it's like, you know what I mean? So it's just good, like getting older and older. But, you know, what are you going to do? Somebody in the what comments was ask, asking if I had seen Fury, the tank movie. Now, I saw um, I saw the trailer. I never got around to seeing it. I've heard it's good. Yeah, we'll get around to that one yeah. of these days. Uh, Zach says, hey, bitches, guess who's got two thumbs and is going down to Louisiana on St. Patty's Day? Uh oh uh oh don't get in too much trouble two thumbs yeah you know this guy oh, okay all right <laughs> you, know, you never heard that before never heard that one. this guy never heard it uh zach says is it correct to say kellogg is the cunt responsible for why most american dudes are now circumcised that is a common misconception yeah um he was a big advocate of circumcision as it related to like to keep boys from jerking it um, but not so much uh, for others. But but it is a very common. I think even the Wikipedia page says it's like a common misconception that he's the one that. There's a uh, bunch of misconceptions of, about how that became a thing. Yeah, it's a Christian thing, uh, in, 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 especially in the United States. <clears throat> I've heard a lot of people. They don't. They don't even fucking know. They don't really know this, but. There are some online channels that are, that are run by guys who are gonna kind of like the way I'm describing. In the South, the it's it's mostly Protestant. Each one of those churches that were in the South in the Bible Belt were not organized. Anybody could make a church. We were just making fun of the church the other day. We were driving. We called the First Church of God. Yeah, we and, drove past it yeah, on the way to the restaurant. First Church of God. All right. There's never the Third Church of God or the Seventh Church of God. It's always the first one. And it's just funny, the Church of God. Okay, that could mean anything, you know. Anyway, um, in the South, each church was like its own religion. They're cults. And some people take offense at that. Just cult just means a, a religion that's smaller than a denomination. You maybe know, you should, maybe like... Just small. Okay. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people use the word sect yeah, like a instead sect. because it doesn't have right. the same negative connotation. Right. Well, uh, a lot of this stuff is just uh, up to whatever minister is running that church. There was an old fashioned Southern interpretation of Christianity that you first had to become a Jew and then you converted into Christianity. It's a two step process. Right, like a two step process. <laughs> Now, sometimes you'll see some of these guys like in uh, veterans and stuff uh, in the South uh, living off the grid and, you know, just spread, they'll start praying in the middle of what they're saying and then they'll go back and do a bunch of Old Testament stuff and use using Hebrew, saying Shalom. And and it's just because that was, they're illustrating that they in their in their traditions they're a real Christian that they were a Jew that converted that they converted to Judaism and then they converted to Christianity. And that was they thought that was an old process, and that's kind of confused people over the years. You know, you find these churches just ruins. You know, from the 1800s out in the middle of nowhere in Mississippi, and there'll be a mixture of Christian stuff and then Star of David's and. You might find a, a menorah or something in it. And some people might say, oh, this is a Jewish temple. No, it was a Christian church. It's just that it was like what we're talking about. Where, And th that particular that particular type of Christianity, they got, when they got pissed off, they would go Old Testament on your ass. They really meant it. Going Old Testament. That was about they were getting ready to fire and brimstone shit. You know? They were going to fuck you up. <laughs> well, surprisingly, I mean, people that don't really know the history of yeah. uh, Dr. Kellogg, yeah. 
yeah. and the Battle Creek Sanitarium. Uh, it actually has a lot to do with religion because he yeah. was uh, real into his uh, Seventh Day Adventist uh, kind of thing, which you know uh, influenced yeah. a lot of the beliefs of the uh, that he wrote books about and that they did at the sanitarium. Uh, Tammy says First Church of Pookie. Yes, yeah, First Church of Pookie. Yeah, she's a, she's her own church. But no, I, I I thought it was funny because like the one uh, you know the the church that we passed, I was like they're always First Church of God. I'm like nobody's second yeah. or third church again. It's like we don't want to be like too arrogant. I said I I would love it if somebody would start a church and it was just called God's Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I didn't actually uh, answer the question. I got sidetracked. I guess I didn't really get. The reason why there's circumcision, at least in the South, is because it was part of the covenant between fucking, what was it, Abraham and fucking Moses and all that. It was just to show allegiance to fucking the God of Abraham. That's what it was. Now, I've also heard stories that, at least on the West Coast, a lot of the doctors that ran the hi- that ran the hospitals, the maternity wards, were, were, were Jewish Americans, so they just kind of did it because... Um, in their in, in their belief system, it was more sanitary. It would, it would, it would it, yeah, it and I think the chance of infection and stuff. And there may be something to that. And I think there was uh, they were kind of like instrumental in yeah. you know that kind of the hygiene movement mm. uh, more than the religious movement. I mean, I think it started out more as a religious thing, but then the hygiene yeah. argument took over uh, yeah. to the point now where it seems like I mean it's very widespread. Among like yeah. pretty much everybody. Honestly, I'm not actually sure because I, you know, I don't have any kids. But what I've heard from you know friends of mine that do have kids is that they will basically circumcise a boy unless you tell them not to. Like yeah. they do like it automatically. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what I've heard. But it's been many years since I talked to somebody that had uh, babies. So living in Korea, it, incre- it impressed them Korean girls because their dudes weren't circumcised. They said you could go forever. Like Viagra. You're not as sensitive. So. Gramther said, only one kid in my junior yeah. high was uncirked. Poor guy got slammed into the gym class lockers every day for having a turtleneck. I don't remember that. Well, I mean, well, that was junior high. Did oh, you know him high. in junior yeah, high? Yeah, I didn't know him in junior high. Yeah, I kind of feel like, it, I, in the United States, at least as far as I haven't looked up the stats on this, but I'm sure, pretty sure it's like very widespread, and they basically will do it unless you specifically tell them not to. Um... Europe, not so much. I think it's maybe half and half. They don't really worry about it as much. But yeah, so uh, there. But there is, um, you know, this time back to the topic. It is yeah. uh, a misconception that Dr. John Kellogg was the one that made that more widespread. There were actually some other doctors that you know made it more widespread, but he wasn't. I don't think he ever said that he was an advocate of just like everybody being circumcised, like for whatever reason. He was mostly an advocate of it for people who were chronic masturbators, <laughs> like to get them to stop it. Yeah, uh, that was one of his. So it's a little, uh, a little barbaric, just a little bit. But a uh, southern guy who goes Old Testament and starts uh, saying shalom and all that kind of stuff. You think you're dealing with a Jew? Uh, that that channel is. Uh, Bear Independent. He goes by the name of Bear. And he's a big old veteran, fucking big old beard, and he sells one of the best IFAX, which is an individual first aid kit I've ever fucking seen. It's about a hundred something bucks, about that big. And he sells them to guys in SF and Rangers, they'll carry them, and you can buy them too. He's got everything you need, one of the best individual first aid kits I've ever seen. And he even keeps a score of how many people how many people's lives that thing saved up to now i think last he said it was 33 lives saved off that damn kit it's got everything from open keeping your airways open fucking uh bandages with self self fucking clotting stuff in there it's it, it's a good kit and uh and if you use it he replenishes everything inside of it free of charge if you give him photographs of the body and the, the person that you saved he'll you know he'll uh, he'll 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 replenish the guts inside there. Cheryl says uh, I was raised on cornflakes with water because we were poor as fuck. I can't eat them anymore. So gross. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's water. That's I've hard. heard about that. Like yeah, yeah, when you're down to like the fucking it's the end of the month yeah. and you're out of money, you don't have any milk. I don't. I think I've maybe eaten that once or twice. I'm not a huge fan of cornflakes either. Uh, I do like frosted flakes, but only if they just have a little bit of milk on them because they get soggy. 
Cheryl says, also, I didn't circumcise my boys. I didn't feel like it was my choice to make for them. That's kind of where I stand on it. Um, seems a little weird to be like cutting pieces off of a baby. Like when they don't, if they want to get circumcised later, that's totally up to them. Oh, um, man, if you did, shit happens to you when you're a kid, fucking you're not Yeah, but it's just, I don't know. That seems weird to me. I'm also not really into, because I know that, um, I don't know how common this is anymore, but I remember when I was growing up that some people would have little girl babies and would pierce their ears. And I'm just like, why would you do that? It's like, why don't you wait until they're older? Yeah. Like I didn't, I got my ears pierced when I was like 11 or 12 or something like that. Cause I wanted to, don't but I was like, that seems like a weird thing to do to a baby. And it's like not necessary. All of central and South America, then baby's ears are pierced. But like I said, it's it just seems it weird because they yeah. can't really, they can't decide that for themselves yeah. and it's not necessary. They don't yeah. need to have pierced ears. In they can get them later. In it's Brazil, easy. them girls were in fucking high heels, mini skirts and carrying purses at eight. That is also creepy. At eight. That is also creepy. It was not considered to be unusual. It was just girls' clothes. It's creepy, though. And, you know, they came fully formed like little ladies and fucking... Pet, the pedos must have, love that shit. No, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just, they, they came fully skilled with makeup and shit, you know, by the time they were 10. Like I said, that's, that's like some John Benet Ramsey shit right there. That's it was creepy. just a whole... It's, it's creepy all shit. Brazil, hey, Mexico may be like that for all I know. I don't know, but That's fucking uh, Brazil was all like that. It was just here are pedos. Was, everybody's gonna move it's down not, there. It, it, it's not you're sexualizing it. It wasn't sexualization. It was gender. It was about gender. Uh, very clearly defined gender roles, and that's what little girls wanted to wear. And they're like, yeah, yeah, here, you know. And they put little heels on and purses. They wanted to be like the big girls, pretend like they're smoking and shit. They weren't smoking, but they pretend like they were smoking. Remember, we used to have those candy cigarettes yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. I don't think they make those anymore. Uh, Grandpa said, I recently watched uh, The Road to Wellville. Yeah, I saw that too, like a, a long time ago with Anthony Hopkins in it, which it's about this guy. It's like based on a book that came out in 1993. I can't remember when the movie came out. I remember it being okay, though. I kind of feel like I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Did they just kind of make him seem like um, just sort of like a doddering old quack, sort of? You know, he's walking around in his white suit and his white shoes, you know, looking like a Colonel Sanders looking motherfucker with his like white cockatoo on his shoulder and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about Dr. John Kellogg, though, is that he was actually not some of his beliefs were pretty quacky. I'm not going to say that, but he was kind of a complicated individual. Honestly, um, he had some ideas that were wacky as fuck. He had some ideas that were kind of like fucked up and evil as fuck. And he also had some ideas that were actually pretty good and that like people still uh, adhere to to this day. He was really ahead of his time in terms of making various kinds of health food, meat substitutes, uh, things like that, like vegetarianism. So he was like way ahead of his time on that and like talking about like the importance of exercise and shit like that. So, you know, but then he had like some real fucked up stuff too, like, you know, shooting yogurt up your butt and you know eugenics and stuff like that so like i said he was a complicated individual but he totally wasn't a quack he was a real doctor like he did actually go to medical school and finish and stuff like that he wasn't just one of those motherfuckers that pretended like like some of those serial killers like fucking did hh H. holmes like say he was a Doctor, even though he never finished medical school, was it H.H. Holmes? I, I thought was he did of? have. I thought he did have. Uh, well, see, some, that's the thing, though. Back in those days, it didn't mean much to be a doctor. Yeah, I was just kind of like, well, how much did medical school yeah. like entail? No, it was easy. They're just kind of like, well, here, apply leeches, okay. No, I here's your. <laughs> I'm just. I know. Yeah. It's, it's called hyperbole yeah. for the sake of humor. But uh, yeah, it's just like, how much could there have been to learn? There wasn't much. Not really. Uh, so, actually, in light of that, so I will say that Dr. Kellogg did actually have some decent ideas um, mixed up with some kind of crazy ones. But, you know, like I said, you we can't all, we're not all perfect. Everybody's complicated. <laughs> uh, yeah, Granther's Hammer says, they made him to be a bucktooth anti-sex quack who poked through people's turds. <laughs> um, I don't know if he was so, well, he was kind of like... I don't know if he was obsessed with people's bowel movements and stuff so much, but he was kind of obsessed with, you know, enemas and making sure everybody was regular and whatnot. The thing about um, looking at people's fucking dung is not unusual. That goes back, the Chinese have been doing that for thousands of years. They have a whole damn science of looking at a motherfucker's turds and analyzing the smell. Of what's, and, and through that, 
they're trying to figure out what's happening in your body. Well, yeah, I mean, it, is, so, it sounds gross, but yeah. it is there is like some legit science behind yeah. that. Well, I don't know if it's legit. You well, legit-ish. S- some things you could you could tell were going wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a reason that pa- sometimes you you have to give a stool sample. Or something sure. like that, you know, if fucking there's blood in it, or you know, the digestion isn't happening right, then then of course you know you could tell. It's just whether or not they were actually uh, prescribing things based upon what they saw or what they thought they were say or thought they were seeing, or was it something like palm reading? Or reading the entrails of a fucking slaughtered chicken, you know, you don't know what what exactly they're doing, you know. Maybe you they're just go. maybe they're just like really into scat play, and they're trying to pretend. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what it was. And they're trying to pretend that yeah, again, I'm joking. Yeah, I don't think um, they're just trying no, to pre- they're just trying to that. pretend that it's like a science. I'm pretty pretty yeah. obvious that I was joking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, so, uh, Camp Guy says hard for some vegetarians to get enough protein. Uh, I know a gal that tried it for a good while and then she had to go back. Now, that is one thing that Dr. Kellogg was probably not right about. He was right about a lot of stuff, like, as far as diet was concerned, but he was kind of more into low-protein diets rather than high-protein. And, you know, uh, and the fact that they, you know, call him, like, anti-sex, he was absolutely that. Um, again, he was a Seventh Day Adventist, which you know I'll explain what that is if you don't know in a minute. But they were very uh, sex only for procreation, and he was actually even <coughs> extreme in that regard. Uh, he didn't think that you should have sex ever. And uh, legend has it—I don't know if this is true or not—but legend has it that he and his wife, who were married for forty years, never had sex. Now they did have a bunch of foster kids like they fostered a shit ton of uh children but i but they never had any of their own i don't know if it's true but legend says that he uh was abstinent uh as was his wife for 40 years of their marriage i have a hard time buying that but i don't know maybe he, he seemed like a true believer so and honestly um you know maybe people don't know this when you talk about like kellogg's cornflakes and shit like that but the reason that he came up with all those kind of foods was they wanted kind of like bland, boring foods because they thought that that would keep people from getting sexually aroused. Eating boring, <laughs> tasteless ass food. <laughs> like he wouldn't put sugar in anything <laughs> and stuff like that because he thought that if it tasted too good, you'd get all excited and then start humping everything in sight, evidently. I don't know. So, like I said, a little bit, it is a little bit quacky. But some of the stuff he came up with, and he did invent a lot of stuff like he and he did not just uh food wise but he did a lot of uh like medical devices like patents and things like that um that actually were legitimately helpful uh at the time so again you kind of it's kind of like a mixed bag with this dude but that's why i kind of thought that he was so interesting uh zach says see this all feeds back into this weird contradiction in u.s society where sex is bad but violence is good yeah, that's one thing that that uh, that I don't think that's, as, that's always been very weird to me. No, that's something that I've noticed as well. It's not as bad as it used to be. No, that's true. The, that's the, true. The seventies was the worst with that. Yeah. Seventies and the sixties. I think seventies from what I remember. I always just thought that was so strange that. And honestly, when I was in the UK, they thought it was very weird, too, because they're like, so you can show these horror movies with people getting like their heads chopped off, but you can't show tits. Yeah. They're like, that's very strange. <laughs> they thought that was very strange. Well, it was two or three different organizations fighting over, fighting for control over the television set. That's what that that's what that's what Yeah. That that's all it was. Tammy says, used to watch a TV show called You Are What You Eat. The one lady would look at someone's poo and tell them what they were eating wrong. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> why? Why would you choose voluntarily to do that? Unless you were kind of into it. I mean, let's let's be honest. Why would you want to spend your entire professional life looking at other people's poop? I don't know. They got weird doctors that look up people's cooches. That's true, but it's just kind of like, well, see, that's what I wonder. I always kind of wonder about that. And I'm not saying that, obviously, we need doctors that specialize in every part of the human body. They go where the money is. And, you know, specialists yeah. generally do make more money than, yeah. you know, generalists. But when you're going to specialize, I kind of feel like, why would you necessarily, like, why would you want to be a podiatrist or, 
you know, why wouldn't you be something like a cardiologist that Demand. isn't like as gross? No, demand where, <laughs> where they'll take you. Or like, you know, because really, do you want to, you know, if you make a lot of money as a doctor, but really, do you want to spend your entire professional career like sticking your hand up people's asses? I think they I go, wouldn't. I think they but go where they can. That's true. You know. But I mean, when you go, well, when you go to medical school, and apparently, like the first few years, you learn all your general shit, and then if you decide you want to specialize, so then you kind of go and do your specialization. So there's some point where you have to choose, like, what you want to specialize in. So there are some people that voluntarily. Yeah, but you probably have to fucking make certain grades in order to get this other stuff. And another thing is, the <laughs> they widow you down. It's like, well, yeah, you, you have to, you, you have to be the yeah. butt doctor. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and, and the medical industry is a mafia, basically. Too. <laughs> you know, it's like a mafia. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I worked for some of them. You know, fucking Dr. Matt's like, fucking, no, well, you know, this is a for business. This is for a for profit business, you know. Fucking, no, man. It's, he wasn't too happy about it, actually. That shit's corrupt. Tammy's talking about Dr. Pimple Popper. Yeah. I can't believe that's an actual show on an actual network. And I know that that's, I don't understand. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I get it that people like watching. That kind of thing, because there's something like weirdly satisfying about it, but I can't watch it without wanting to throw up. So, uh, Zach says, like watching Law and Order, where you can show insane violence and gore, but there's no swearing in the dialogue, and boobs are hidden by furniture conveniently in the foreground. I know. See, that always seemed like very, very strange to me. Well, like I said, it's not really like that so much anymore. It was a long time um, ago. Yeah, that was. I kind of feel like that was more of an '80s thing. And it was television. It wasn't reality. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking about, and I just thought it was like very strange that like on television you could show people getting like shot or macheted or something like that, but if you showed like a boob, everyone would freak out about it, which I thought was like really hilarious. They just had these regulations they had to adhere to, and they did everything they did, everything they could do to skirt around them. Like there could be violence, but then you have to go back and look at the details. There, 